Morning, uh, Gary Porter again. I finished up. Uh, I took the two pole transformers and stuck them in these uh, plastic tubings, and I put an end cap and used solder and iron to melt the end cap to the to the cylinder. Then I took these uh, transformer pieces here, our core material from a transformer, shoved that down into, and I, well, and before I did that, I, I, I cut them all, made sure that they were going to fit in around the transformer. <clears throat> and then I put, mixed up some resin and some brake drum turnings from the local uh, Mida shop. And uh, I got uh, the uh, transformer core was made with uh, a piece of plastic that was fit the hole and that was filled with the brake drum turnings and resin. When that hardened then the whole thing fit down into the resin and the brake drum turnings in the bottom, slid these pieces here down in and I just finished uh, putting, uh, I put oil, mineral oil, filled the gap in here and uh, I thought I had solder and ironed the all the joint all the way around the bottom real good but I had a pinhole somewhere in, a, in each in each of the two transformers and uh, the uh, so I just well I just kept on working it with some goop and stuff and got it finally sealed up I hope or the oils aren't going to leak out but anyway uh, so if that happens then I'm going to take this whole thing and put it in another plastic tubing bigger and then fill the whole environment with oil again. But I don't think, I think it stopped leaking, so that solved that problem. Uh, this is a low voltage side, and this is a high voltage side. And uh, one of them is uh, the 22 gauge wire, 400 turns, 2.5 turns, copper plate. And then the other one is the 24 gauge, 400 turns, 2.5 inch copper plate. Uh, Two and a half turns, and the, the copper plate's about two inches thick. I mean, two inches wide, and it's easily bent, so it's probably about oh less than a thirty seconds of an inch thick. So that's where we are right now, and uh, I got my little twenty-four volt motor here, got that ready to go, and I'm waiting on the pump. And uh, I had talked to Christopher about uh, Gerard's experiments. And what they've discovered is that at certain RPMs, the energy f seems to stop coming from the pump. Well, when you think about what's going on in the pump motor, the, uh, the dipole in the magnet has to transfer flux through the ferrite core, and that has limitations and, uh, on the amount of times it can, it can move energy through the ferrite has a certain frequency that it can actually run at, a, it'll reach a maximum. And uh, another thought I've had on this is that the magnet itself, when you take a magnet and you move it from point A to point B, what actually has to happen is now the magnet's energy coming from the ether in the vacuum is now from a different location. So as it's moved through the ether, it has to regauge itself to the next position. And if it's spinning at say 10,000, 20,000 RPMs or something, it is possible that the ether and the magnetic field uh, can't regauge fast enough, and uh, that's then it makes the magnet become weaker. That's a possibility too. I don't know. I don't know about that, but that's a interesting guess. But uh, I do know that the ferrite material that's used for these cores in these uh, motors has definitely has limitations on frequency. And uh, so maybe that will solve that problem. I don't know. The other problem with uh, 166 volts I believe was just a simple uh, feeding back of impedance back when the high voltage tube was run, the big toll tube. And that impedance feeding back into the circuit storage unit 8x10 right beside the railroad track so I get hammered and uh, sometimes a little shaky but not today. Anyway, uh, so that's basically the 166 volts. The increase was actually from 120 to 166 because the other circuit was running the, the floodlights and uh, 
it's interesting that uh, once the large sodium tube was turned on, the voltage went up, the impedance had changed on the where the two caps were installed. And uh, so it's a matter of changing the tuning in the circuit that gave him the 166 volts. I suspect that with further tuning, tuning everywhere, you know, use caps, whatever, uh, you can really beat this thing up pretty good. And, uh, so we'll know more pretty soon. Have a great day.